Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to another video on the Telefunken de Kapo project. I've been uh, checking up the, uh, the AM section. As I promised, I was going to go back into the radio stages. And uh, I've checked up the AM and uh, this was amazing. Uh, I had one capacitor to change. One capacitor. Now, uh, I didn't take a week to check one capacitor. I've actually been doing a few other things like uh, trying to learn how to edit videos with uh, DaVinci Resolve, which I've got to tell you is quite a learning curve. But um, anyway, it's just the housekeeping that needs to be done when you run a, a YouTube channel like, uh, like this one, or like anyone. Well, the one capacitor has been changed. I've checked everything else. I've got to just comment on the uh, values of components here. The resistor values have come up incredibly close. I mean, these resistors are as good as new. Now, you probably know if you watch this channel that um, getting good resistors on a restoration is a bit of a hit and miss. Sometimes they come out incredibly close. Sometimes they're completely out. Uh, in some cases, depending on the type of resistor they have, uh, some of them can go out more than others. In this case, they are incredibly close to the original value. So I've had to change none of them, which is great. As for the capacitors, there's only the, the paper caps that uh, really are bad, and they are really, really bad. That uh, cap that I replaced here on the AM section, on the radio section, was so bad it was all bubbling at the end, so it's dead. Now, what I want to do is I want to try a live test. And <laughs> I have not tested the AM reception on this. I want to do it live. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. We can all laugh about it, or at least I will. <laughs> You'll probably criticize, but that's okay as well. So we're going to test it. I'm going to put the tubes in. I'm going to power it up and see if we have reception. Depending on what we find, perhaps we can go further and uh, actually do a quick alignment of the AM section of this radio for now. And then obviously there's still the, the FM to come. So let's set that up and see, uh, see how this goes. Let's hope this is not a train wreck. If it is, you probably won't see this video. Anyway, let me get it going. I have the two tubes ready here. This is the same tubes that came. These are the same tubes that came in the radio. We've got the EF89 over here. Now, I've got to tell you, these Telefunkens have got some really nice tube sockets. None of that sort of crappy stuff that you see sometimes. These are very, very good quality ones. You can see it and feel it. So we've got our tubes in. What we have now is um, the ECH81 mix oscillator, the EF89, which is the IF uh, amplifier, the ABC80, which is the detector and the first preamp, the audio preamp, which we've already tested, together with the power tube. No other tubes are in. <laughs> I think we're ready. To start off with, I just want to make a comment about how I set up the uh, speaker wires. These are the two speaker wires uh, for the main speaker. The electrostatic tweeter ones are the ones that are wrapped up there. I'm not using that for now. But what I tend to do is I tend to use one of these quick clip connectors. And I just leave that on here. I put it on the actual radio. So if uh, for some reason it's on and uh, it inadvertently inadvert touches something, that would be okay, that's ground, but if that touches, I could short out the transformer. So this provides a little bit of protection. It also makes it incredibly easy to connect my external speaker on here. I'm using the small one. So I just come here and we're ready for business. The other thing is the antenna. Now I'm using the mini whip and the way the antenna works as I believe I mentioned in the uh, first video when we, when we were looking at the back, is that this thing has got a dipole connection. These two points over here are the dipole inputs for the FM. That is the uh, antenna input for the AM, external antenna for the AM. And this thing here is connected to that guy there. So if you flip this down, it's sort of sprung. It's actually quite stiff. It's very stiff, actually. But if you bring this down to there, that means the uh, internal dipole antenna is also connected to the AM antenna and you get some assistance, some reception. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, mini whip, which I have plugged onto through here. 
And in this case, that is the ground view antenna down there. So we'll just stick that in. And that there then becomes the AM input for the antenna. So that is ready now to receive. So this is my antenna switcher. I can put on MiniWhip. It's selected down here. I could also just have the uh, long wire, which is passive, but we want MiniWhip, so that's on. I'm actually going to select, what is this, long wave, medium wave, FM. Let's try medium wave, leave it selected. So this is already on. When I uh, switch on the dim bulb limiter, it'll have power. So let's see what we've got here. We've got one light bulb, the 40 watt bulb is in. The others are all off, limits on. I'm gonna hit it. Okay, light bulb went slightly bright. That's a 40 watt bulb, so very little current is flowing through there. In fact, we can see here, 80 milliamps. There's a slight restriction. It's now dropping, the voltage is dropping because the current's increasing as the tubes start to conduct. And let's put the volume up. I can hear a buzz. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Brilliant. Okay, we're getting something. Ooh. Canary Islands coming loud and clear. Fantastic. Fantastic. Listen to that. This is Canary Islands. I don't even know where on the dial the local station is, the one local station. This is on, uh, what is that, jazz? And it's on speech. You can certainly tell the difference there. This is bass. Speech. Okay, this is jazz and intimate. That is very, very uh, obvious. Let's see what we get on long wave, which at this time of day should be bugger all. Oh. There's something there. This is North Africa. Okay, that's to be expected. Actually, what was that? Ah, oh. there's our long forgotten beacon. This is the uh, Port Santo Airport, I believe. And it's always a good reference to see whether the long wave's coming through at all. So, put that off. It looks like our radio is working. Now, the alignment on this, again, as usual, can be divided into two sections. One is the uh, IF alignment, the alignment for the IF frequency, which will um, help with uh, selectivity and sensitivity. And that is actually done with these two according to the um, service manual. This is the one coil, the one uh, IF transformer here and below on the underside. This guy here is for FM. So that's the one. And this, I believe, is the other one. Again, here and on the other side. And that, um, that really is the extent of the, uh, the IF alignment we need to do. And the way to do this is to um, set this up with a signal coming from the signal generator into the grid of uh, the ECH81, the mixer oscillator. You can actually do this. Remember, this is the this is where a signal comes out at this end. This is where a signal goes in at this end. So you can do it in a different way. Sometimes they actually want you to do this in two steps, and it makes sense. This is where your signal comes in at this end here, and that's where your signal comes out. All right. Now, if your IF transformers are both completely out of whack, you can actually uh, feed the signal into the grid of this tube, of the uh, IF amplifier tube, the EF89. You feed the uh, IF signal in there, modulated signal, and you adjust this transformer here and at the bottom till you get the signal coming out and make sure that that is audible and you maximize it and everything else. And then you go one step back because this is like one sluice gate and this is another sluice gate. 
If this one is completely out of whack, there's no point in adjusting this one because it just won't get through there. It'll come from the mix oscillator through that one, which you can do whatever you want to. It'll get to here, go into there. If this one's completely blocked, it just won't get through. So it makes sense to start at the end. In other words, at this one by feeding the signal in here and then going back and fixing this one by feeding the signal in here. However, because we know we're getting a signal coming through, we know that this guy isn't completely out of whack. What I normally do is I just feed it into the, uh, the first stage, the grid of the ECH81, and I do both. Makes it easier. It usually works. I don't recall ever having one so completely out of tune that I had to do it in stages. I might have done, I just can't remember. But I'm going to look at the instructions just a little bit more, make sure that I've got this right especially which uh, coil cores to adjust, because sometimes you can mess it up. <laughs> you can uh, be adjusting the FM core instead of the AM and, um, and not know it. So let me just have a quick look and then I'll come back to here. That's the first stage. The second stage is actually doing the RF alignment, which is uh, making sure that um, for the two AM bands, the long wave and medium wave, when you tune to a specific frequency on the dial, that is the frequency that you are actually getting through. And that involves adjusting the oscillator coil for that particular band. So we'll do it for the long wave, then we'll do it for the uh, medium wave. It also has an antenna circuit, which means that when you adjust it for a particular frequency, let's say one megahertz, and let's assume it's here on the dial, and you're getting the signal coming through perfectly on the dial because you've adjusted the oscillator, you then can adjust the antenna, antenna circuit to ensure that the front end is optimally widened or opened up for that particular frequency. In other words, you are actually getting the best signal possible at one megahertz that you have tuned to. All right, time to have a quick look at the uh, service manual and then come back and do the alignments. All right, we're all set. We've got the uh, signal generator set to 460 kilohertz, which is the IF frequency. I'm sending a modulated signal of uh, smallest I can it's going through the switch attenuator to make it even smaller because if I put the volume up, we can hear it and see it on the meter. And the idea is you make it as small as possible so that you don't uh, activate the audio uh, automatic gain control. And now I'm going to do the top one, starting with that guy there. Now the problem here sometimes is just getting through the wax. There's a lot of wax on here. I've got it. Okay. Let's see. Nope. Nope. That's a peak. It's where it was. So no difference. Okay. Let's do this guy. I've got a feel that it's in the screw groove. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let me increase the attenuation. Increased it by 3 dBs. Keep going. Whoa. More attenuation. Another 3 dB. That seems to be about it. That really went up. That really went up. Okay. Let me start on the underside. Now the underside can be a little bit complicated to get in there. See where it is? It's that second one there. I think I've got it. It's a little bit difficult with all the noise, but I'm hearing the signal. That's down. That's to where it should be. That's noise. I keep going, it goes down. So that there seems to be the peak on that one. Let me try the other one. The other one is here. I'll try it with my stick. I think I've got it. No, I don't have it. It's difficult to grab it. Trying to see if I can feel my way in there. 
through some of the wax if I can feel the groove. Nope, wrong way. Nope, there we go, that's it. So, volume down. It looks like they were both pretty, uh, pretty well, this one was pretty accurate top and bottom. This guy actually gave us a lot at the top. So it does seem that someone actually got into there at the top and tried to tweak it, which is always a good thing because then you see some great results from your uh, on your reception. And as you can see here also, I actually soldered a little wire to the uh, pin 2 of the ECH81, which is the uh, mix oscillator. And that always helps to make sure you don't slip up when you connect your signal. And that, my friends, is the full extent of the IF alignment for the AM. And listen to this. This is uh, early afternoon in Madeira. This is early afternoon in Madeira, where we normally get very, very little on medium wave. And this thing looks like, or sounds like, it's just next door. This is amazing. This is from the Canary Islands. Now, I'm not too surprised. This is a Telefunken after all, so reception is bound to be good. But it always is uh, reassuring to hear this quality coming out of uh, a station, which is, I think, 600 kilometers away in Canary Islands. And this is a result of two things, not just the quality of reception on this particular radio, but also the fact that I'm using the Mini Whip. And the Mini Whip antenna is magical. Listen to this. I'm going to put this up, and I'm going to switch the Mini Whip from, or the antenna input from Mini Whip to Long Wire. And my long wire is a 30 meter wire around the top or the edge of, uh, the, of my apartment building. I live on the top floor. This is just above my head. 30 meters of wire, so it should be pretty good. And I'm going to put it on, try and get it out of music first. We'll leave it there and I'll put it on long wire. Gone. No signal. I can hardly hear it. Many whip. Long wire. Many whip. So as you can see, it makes one hell of a difference. That is the uh, IF alignment. Next, I'll be doing the RF, but I'm not going to do it now because I need to put the dial glass on there. That needs a bit of cleaning and so on. So I'm going to do that uh, together with the RF alignment for the FM when I've done the FM, which will be the next stage, uh, which should be quite simple because I don't expect major problems. This thing had uh, very, very little wrong with the components. I'm hoping that that uh, tendency will extend to the FM section as well. And there's one capacitor which I probably will need to change on here, and that is the discriminator cap. It's the electrolytic inside that box over there that I have transformer with the with the uh, EABC80 in there. Somebody mentioned that, and uh, I'll probably be taking the lid off, so you'll see what, what it's like inside. And I'll definitely need to take the lid off if I need to replace that uh, discriminator cap. So I'm going to stop for now and um, get back to the learning curve with the DaVinci Resolve uh, video editing software. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.